Welcome back to The Business Sets on The Business Pulse, the online show where we take complex things about business and we make them simple so that you can see what you're looking at and understand what you need to do next. Whether you're just getting started or you've been in it a while, but you need to take the next step. This is the show where we talk about tactics and tools, we share inspirational stories, and we unlock business insights so that you know what you need to do to take the next step. Today we talk business mastery as we chat with our guest about transforming your average productivity to developing high performance individuals in business. With me in studio today is professional speaker and business author, the CEO and founder of The Possibility of You, a specialist consulting, training and development firm chatting about transforming average productivity in creating a high performance individual for your business. Alex Granger. Welcome, Alex. Welcome, thank you very much. We're chatting about fit for purpose. That's right. And creating high performance individuals. Why fit for purpose? Well, if you think about it, we under a lot of pressure in the economy. And I think individuals need to understand how they can become truly fit for the purpose at hand. And, you know, the, de the definition of fit for purpose is quite simple. Uh, anything that is good enough to do the job that it was designed to do. So you can imagine yourself in a business environment doing whatever job you do, are you fit enough to carry out the tasks? And you've got to take a few steps back and say, well, do I actually want to be there to start with? And that's why I think it's so key that we really focus on being fit for purpose because the purpose aspect of being fit is key. It, it's what makes us work. It, it's what makes us, it drives us to do what we do. But if you're in the wrong place doing the job that you're not really crazy about, well, we're gonna have a few problems there. So when I first read fit, I thought body, I thought physical, I thought make me look good. I'm hearing something more valuable, more important. What do you mean by fit? It's in the mind. Eh? I believe everything that we do, that we say, whether we want to be fit physically, it all starts in the mind and how our mindset determines our future. How we think, how we behave, it all starts with, with the mind. And so in becoming truly fit for purpose, one has to first think about it and think about, okay, where am I now? Where do I want to be? What's the, what's the gap and how do I bridge it? We're chatting with Alex Granger. We're talking fit for purpose. We're looking at creating a high performance individual as you take the next step to make a success in your business. Alex, what's so important to you about this idea of being fit for purpose? Well, I don't know about you, Robin, but I'll tell you this. When I get into organizations uh, and do the work that I do, I get worried because I find quite a bit of a... a almost a, just a disjoint between leadership, organizational culture, and people performance, because that's really what Fit for Purpose covers. It's the leadership aspect, how leaders drive their business, but also how they actually impact and influence organizational culture. And that in turn is what drives human performance. So why is it important to me? Well, ultimately I wanna see this layer of people, the, the workers, the performers, to, to flourish and really have meaningful careers but they can't have that if the leaders are not driving organizational culture, if the leaders themselves are not fit for purpose, if the organizational culture is not fit for purpose. Therefore, how can they be fit for the purpose they have to do? Awesome. Alex Granger, the speaker author, wasn't always an author and a speaker. Yeah. <laughs> so where did you get this idea? Well, you know, actually, I was actually speaking at a conference, um, one of my clients, and their theme of their conference was fit for purpose. And I listened to some of the things they shared and I said, you know what, they're onto something great, but I wanted to really delve a little bit deeper because their aspect was really around just the leadership. And I felt that really, you really can't just leave it there because how many times have you gone into an organization and you found, wow, the CEO, such an inspirational guy. But when you speak to the receptionist, she doesn't like her job. And you wonder, well, what happened between this guy that I met that's fantastic and this receptionist that's just like totally the opposite and made me realize that actually, I don't have to worry too much about this, although it's important, but how do I get this this group of people to start becoming fit for purpose. And I realized actually, well, I can't start with them. It's got, to, it's got to start at the top because these are the guys who influence everything coming down. So speaking to the, the, the person who's building a business, building their success story, and if they get it right, when they're successful, they will be the guy at the top. Absolutely. I mean, it's more than that. You know, it's, it's, when we talk about fit for purpose leaders, well, what do they need to do? I mean, what are the key things they need to do? I mean, there's four key strategies around leadership. The one is to have a strong vision. I mean, as a leader, you need to know where you're taking this organization, but not just where you want to take it. How are you going to galvanize everybody in the business to come with you? How are you going to excite them to say, guys, this is where I'm taking the business. It's an exciting journey. Do you believe it? 
and they get so excited, inspired by it, and they move there. The second thing is, well, how consistent are your messages? You know, and I'm not talking about emails, copy everyone in the organization. I'm just talking about how relevant are your messages to the business? Are you talking to people face to face? The third one is, well, are you identifying talent? Are you understanding what your people want? Do you understand their needs in the business? And the fourth one, which I think is quite important, is don't make profit the only goal. What about passion? What about customer service? What about relationships? What about networking? All these other things that actually, if you take care of uh, customer value, well, then shareholder value takes care, takes, gets taken care of. We're in the studio talking with Alex Granger about creating, as an individual leading your business, a high-performance individual and becoming fit for purpose. Coming up in the next episode on Business Sense, we talk sales mastery and the number one skill in business and in life with a sales mastery expert. Welcome back to the Business Sense, the online show where you take complex things about business and make them simple. Alex, fit for purpose. Yeah. What's important about this today? Well, let's think about it. The South African economy has shrunk. Jobs are on the line. So what's important is, well, how do you first be, remain relevant in the job that you're doing? Um, and organizations are looking to increase productivity while reducing costs. And when you talk about cost cutting, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, it's like we have load shedding in electricity. It's people shedding in business. People want to cut down human resource. If someone resigns, they want to multitask. Get one guy to do three people's jobs because two have resigned. And so it's important that as individuals, we make ourselves almost indispensable. We, we make ourselves so good that actually when we go on leave, the CEO stresses, oh my goodness, Alex is going on leave because you're that good. But at the same time, you can't just be good on your own. You've got to then collaborate and share with your team, you know, and, and ensure that even though you're absent, the, the company doesn't, you know, fall behind. They, they can continue doing their work. So the relevance of being fit for purpose is not just making you an island of, it, of, of success, but it's just saying that I inspire others by, by being so exceptional that everybody else strives to be as exceptional as I am. So by doing that, everybody raises their game and becomes more fit for purpose. It's actually more future fit for purpose because you've got to start thinking ahead of the game. So you've introduced another layer to the word purpose yeah. because it's not just about being on purpose now, but it's about creating a purpose. And I like That's that right. idea of yeah. future fit. Alex, I'm just a regular guy. I'm like you and- uh, I'm regular too. <laughs> the, this, this does sound exciting, but it also might, might sound a little bit daunting. So, yeah. so for a regular guy like me, where do I start? What do I need to do to start becoming more fit right. and on purpose? Well, you know, I think as in anything, one has to first start with reflection. You've got to be able to understand where you are right now before you can make any step to move forward because the roadmap to going forward starts with the journey where you are right now. So I would say the first step for anybody who wants to become fit for purpose is to actually do some self-introspection and say, what are the shortfalls in my space? So if I want to be the next accountant, but I don't have a BCom accounting or CA, do I have an opportunity to study? Or do I need to speak to my boss at work and say, I need to be put on a development program uh, that will help me in terms of my finances? Uh, so we start where we are with what we have and we take that first step. I think it was a Chinese uh, um, quote that says, uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And that's the first thing we have to do. From there, we need to go through a whole lot of other steps. I mean, I can share with you, there's, there's over 10 steps in, in terms of becoming fit for purpose. But if I can just share one or two that I think are very important. One of them is to be audacious. You know, to have that intrepid character, that resolute mindset that says, I'm not gonna give up because you know what's gonna happen, curveballs will come your way. When you've made up your mind that you wanna achieve something, there'll be people who will come and say, you can't do it. Or maybe your own spirit will be like, ah, oh, getting disheartened. Do you have that audacious spirit, that resolute character that says, I will continue regardless. And um, after you've done that, there's also post-reflection, which says you look back and say, okay, what have I done since I started? This was my journey, this is where I want to get to. I've said I wanna do A, B, and C. I stumbled on B and I'm still stuck between B and C. What do I do now? Because sometimes the goal cannot be fixed. You can change it. So many of us get so stuck. I wanna be the next CEO and geez, the world is changing. Do you really wanna be a CEO? Maybe you can be something else more exciting. So we can do so many things, you know, and, and the nuts and bolts of being fit for purpose starts with where you are, where you wanna be, recognizing the milestones. And listen, hey, we need to celebrate in between when we do good stuff and we become successful in small things. 
take yourself out, spoil yourself, man, and make it, make it a celebration of success along the road. Instead of waiting for that big bang at the end, oh, I made it, and then celebrate. Alex, that's one thing I'm trying to learn in my world today yeah. is, is honoring the journey and the milestones by celebrating. What's your most favorite celebration? Man, when I get a call, and it's an inquiry to speak at a conference, I start celebrating because, you know, there's some people I know don't even get inquiries. So every opportunity that I get, I count it a blessing because it's, I've got to celebrate that somebody made up their minds to at least consider me or to inquire that, Alex, could you come and speak at our conference before you do all the quotes and all that stuff? And maybe you don't get the gig. So be it. But the fact that you're on the minds of some people, they're sitting around boardroom tables and saying, you know what, we're thinking of that Alex guy. He could come and actually inspire our stuff. And if you don't get the gig, at least you've planted the seed. And that's the thing, you know, when we are in our chosen career, we must look at it as a calling as opposed to a job. Because when you look at it as a calling, it doesn't matter if you don't get the work today. If you're in it for the long haul, you might get it in a year's time. You might get it in two years time. Hell, I've had work that I've pitched for three years ago and I only got it this year. So that's the thing. We must be resolute and continue to plod along and just keep pushing our agenda. That's the second time I've heard you mention the idea of persistence. Yeah. And you've tied it into resolute and courage. I heard you say audacious. Yeah. What's the most audacious thing that you've done in your, let's put on your business hat, as you, as you lead your business and you take, you, you take strides to make your business story successful? I suppose, you know, you, you, you have to take risks, uh, especially in our business. You know, I think as a professional speaker, you know what it's like. You, if you don't speak, you don't get paid. We don't have the luxury of taking leave or being off sick uh, and then getting our monthly income at the end of the month. So if I think about some of the things that I've done that were very audacious was literally jam packing a month with too much work um, to the extent where I felt I was going to burn out. But then I saw that coming. So I started making proper steps to make sure I can handle it. So I did things like making sure I exercised regularly, I ate well, I made sure I had a lot of sleep. And, and that audacious character in me built me up to have the kind of strength to be able to withstand the pressure of travel, the pressure of working in different countries under different climatic conditions with different clients who are always pressuring you to deliver uh, the way they want and taking off one hat from a certain customer and putting on a different hat, whether you're speaking to government or a travel industry or financial industry with the same message that you have but being relevant. And I think you always have to be nimble, on your feet, uh, highly adaptable. Uh, so that audacious character covers quite a lot of things, you know, being, being adaptable, being flexible, um, and also being the guy who delivers the insights. I mean, when you talk about business sense, you, you mentioned earlier, it's about bringing fresh insights. Uh, your client doesn't just want you to come and just deliver your content. You need to keep challenging them and stretching their boundaries. And, and literally on that edge, uh, as Vusi, my friend, would say, on that edge of chaos, how do you stretch your clients? And I find myself every single day challenging the work that I do, going back and saying, this is not good enough. Whatever I've done today that is considered excellent, tomorrow has simply become the standard, so I've got to keep upping my game every single day. We're sitting in the studio chatting to the audacious Alex <laughs> Granger, and uh, I'm excited because what I'm hearing you say does describe, it demonstrates the idea of being fit for purpose. Yeah. And making conscious decisions, not being afraid, what I heard you say, not being afraid to start, getting back to the start, know yeah. where you are, but then having the courage to actually do something about that, to look at steps. The second thing I heard you say is yeah. talk about steps. You wanted to add? I mean, Robin, it's, it's even more than that. Like, you know, as professional speakers, when we're on stage and we're delivering a keynote, and, and we've had a standing ovation and everything, and clients are all excited, and they, oh, they come after that, they shake hands, that was great, that was great. Do you ever take the time to get back home and sit back and say, you know what, actually, was that really good? Was that my best? What are the things that I did wrong in that? Maybe I did too many ums and ahs. Maybe I wasn't standing properly. Maybe I had my hands in my pockets. Whatever it was, you need to continually strive to improve. That Kaizen methodology. Every day, you've got to improve, improve, master your craft. And I do that all the time. I change up my slides also because I need to get inspired myself before I can uh, send that energy out to the audience I'm speaking to. Well, this man is creating a story that's fit for purpose. Alex, as we wrap up here, yeah. what's your purpose? What's your big idea? What are you fighting for? Well, the work that I do is, is transformational. If I can change one life at a time, uh, I've done my job. So when I speak to conference, it doesn't matter whether there's 10 people or there's 1,000 people. I'm not looking for big numbers in audiences. I'm looking to change individuals' lives, or not change them myself, but inspire them to, to find their dreams, to make their journeys worthwhile, to make their lives meaningful. Whether I'm doing a business talk or an inspirational talk, if I can leave there and someone can come up to me at the end and say, you know what, you've planted a new seed in my life, you've changed me. I've achieved my purpose, you know, and that's, and that's for me, that change, it really inspires me when I get that kind of feedback.
Thank you. Awesome. We're in studio with the audacious Alex Granger. We're talking fit for purpose and how you can design a life where you become that high-performing individual in your own business success story. Be audacious. Learn to start from the start. Be comfortable to be where you are at. And then take the courage to take one step at a time, reflect often, and then you reminded me, Alex, to learn to celebrate. Yeah. We're on The Business Sense. This is the show where we take complex things about business and we make them simple. So what tactical tool from Alex Granger today will you apply as you take the next step and make your business story a success? Join us again next time as we talk business mastery with a master sales and leadership expert and we help you understand what the number one skill in business and life is and how that fits with sales. I am Robin Pullen and this is The Business Sense.